In Seattle, Washington, construction is about to begin on the Fremont Siphon, a wastewater conveyance tunnel that extends under the Lake Washington Ship Canal. After providing service for almost a hundred years, the Fremont Siphon has reached the end of its service life and requires replacement. It's a combined sewer outfall tunnel that, that uh, was built in 1910. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's beyond its service life and we're, we're replacing that existing tunnel with two 60-inch uh, microtunnels. Uh, those are actually the carrier pipe size. They'll be larger tunnels. They'll be 84-inch steel casings going across the canal and there'll be a 60-inch liner pipe that will replace what's going through that tunnel that was built in 1910. Sewage and stormwater from more than 100 square miles pass through the existing 48-inch and 60-inch cast iron pipes before being cleaned and safely discharged at the West Point Treatment Plant in Discovery Park. During storms, the pipe carries up to 220 million gallons per day, making it one of the most heavily used pipes in the regional sewer system. The, the EPA has got mandates for stopping, uh, for stopping the stuff from flowing into the ship canal, and so this is an improvement over the existing system that it'll, it will help eliminate outfalls that, that are in the system now. Project elements include two microtunnels under the ship canal, access shafts located on both Queen Anne and the Fremont sides of the canal, connection to existing interceptor pipelines, and a new odor control facility. It's a dense urban environment that poses challenges. In addition to the ship canal, the tunnel is being constructed under city streets, two bicycle paths, park space, existing utilities, and a mixture of business and residential properties. Normally, the kind of equipment and the means and methods that we use for this kind of construction, we have a lot more room. The footprint that we have to work with is very small for doing the kind of work we're doing, and we actually had to buy an existing industrial building and demolish it to give us room to put the first shaft to get across the canal. So the shafts will be uh, approximately 80 foot deep and, and about 35 foot in diameter. The, the launch shaft, shaft will be a little bit bigger. It'll be 36 feet in diameter, and the reception shaft on the south side of the canal will be 29 feet in diameter. A new Heron Connect AVN 1800TB microtunneling machine was chosen for the job. We'll have a mixed face tunnel for soft ground and for rock. So if it encounters uh, large boulders or other rock str uh, stratus, it'll cut through it. Uh, we could have gone with an all rock head, but that would have slowed the progress down substantially if it was if you were in clays and silts and sands. So we, we're using a mixed face, and that should get us through. The contract, worth almost $22 million, was awarded to Stellar J Corporation. The microtunnels are to be installed by Northwest Boring as a subcontractor. We've borrowed the money from... Uh, from the Environmental Protection Agency. They've given it to the State Revolving Fund and the, and the fund loans us this money at real low interest and then we have, it's not a grant, we have to pay it back. It's replacing an old system that's worn out but we're improving it to the extent that they'll, the EPA will loan us money to, to get it done. The new Fremont Siphon will ensure North Seattle and Northern King County continue to enjoy safe, reliable sewer services for decades. Construction of the shafts is scheduled to begin in June and the microtunnel launch on October 19, 2015. In Seattle, Washington, Sterling Noreen for Tunnel Talk.